Well, hey everyone, Grayson here from Wild Witch Honeybee Farms, and today we are going to be talking about seed procedure, emergency cells, and swarm cells. Yikes, your hive is about to swarm. We are going to be talking about what they are, look like and where they are located, and we're also going to be talking about, stay tuned, we're going to be talking about what each cell means for the bees. So, emergency cell, what does that mean? What is seed procedure cell? And is there any difference between them? Not really. But we're going to explain everything, I'm going to explain everything in this video, so stay tuned. So first, let's start out with a swarm cell, one of the most basic cells that we talk about. And I want to make a chart in the left corner right here, and I want to start out that a swarm cell, let's start with location, so each cell has their location. So, what we really think in what tests have shown, we've done a lot of studies, a lot of beekeepers have done studies, scientists on bees do all these studies, showing that usually the swarm cells are on the bottom, and supersedure cells are on top of the frame, while the emergency are somewhere in the middle. It ain't always right. The bees will put a cell wherever they want to, but that's where studies have shown that's where they're usually located, and that's what we have to go by to determine if we have an emergency, seed procedure, or if our hive is about to swarm. And most generally, a swarm hive, a hive that is about to swarm, usually makes about 20 cells. They go, they go crazy and make so many cells, more than they know what to do with, just in case if something goes wrong with the first claim, they, there's still more backups in place. So, there you go. But first, let's start out, what is a swarm cell? And what does it do? So a swarm cell, a swarm, is whenever your bees get too overcrowded, they decide, hey, we're getting too crowded, there's no room for us, we need to get out of here, and we need to, we need to split. And we need a swarm, and what that does is you split the hive in half. Half of the bees, along with the mated queen that's already mated, the old queen, they fly to a tree, we had one right here, by the way, it was up in tall, tall pine tree. We never got it back, sadly. But it's okay if you lose swarms. Sometimes it happened. We it, it's happened to me a couple times. But anyway, whenever they go into the tree, about they stay there for about 48 hours. Go forage and they go try to find places to call their home, basically. And that's why we set out swarm traps. So then a lot of times those scavenger bees, foragers, that's what I call them, go out and try to find a home. Maybe you can spray some kind of swarm lure on your box and then they'll get attracted to that and maybe a swarm, you'll catch a swarm and that's what the whole meaning of it and that's why we call it a swarm cell because that is what they use to swarm and split. And they have to swarm because if they didn't swarm, we wouldn't have bees on the surf. It's just as simple as that and a swarm generally happens in spring but that's what a swarm cell is contained of. That means they are getting overcrowded and they need to swarm and whenever you see this, the beekeeper will usually go into that hive and split them and prevent it. But sometimes we can't prevent it. Let's just say that we're not perfect. We can't get in there all the time and make sure that they're not about to swarm. Let's just face it. All of us beekeepers have lost the swarm one part of the time. I've lost, I've lost swarms all the time. But it happens. But that is what a swarm cell is used for. And it's usually located on the bottom of the frame. Now that I've explained to you guys about a swarm cell, now let's talk about a supersedure cell and what a supersedure holds within it in a scenario. What a supersedure cell is, a supersedure cell means that the bees are going to replace the queen. So sometimes whenever a queen naturally gets too old, maybe she loses her ability to lay as good as she did when she was younger. She's just too old. The bees really need a new queen to keep the hive alive. and Maybe that queen can't keep the hive, the bees thriving. So then what they'll do is they'll ball her and kill her and they'll raise some more queen, a new queen. They'll usually make about five super procedure cells. And what they're intending to do is replace her and get a new queen. Maybe she's just failing and she's no good. I've had that happen a couple times where they supersede her. And that's natural. It's sometimes good that they do that. If, she, if the bees think that, that she needs to go, the bees know more than we do. That means she needs to go. It means she's getting too old. And generally, beekeepers like to replace queens every year. So then you don't have to worry about that. For me, I don't really worry about it. I'll let the bees run their course until the queen, queen gets too old. And the bees decide to go ahead and, you know, say bye-bye to her and make a new queen. And that happens. But nothing to be alarmed. It's just natural. The bees do that. Because if they keep that old queen and she's not laying good, 
that queen ain't gonna do good for the hive because she can't lay good. She ain't as young as she was and she doesn't have the ability, like I said, to lay and keep the hive thriving. So that is what a super seizure cell holds within itself and that's where it all, it's where it's all formed and it's usually placed on the top of the frame to be top. You know, a lot of times when you see the cells hanging from the top, probably most likely a super seizure cell, but sometimes, hey, it could even be a storm cell. You never know with bees, they'll like I said earlier in the video, they'll place their cells anywhere they don't care. But like I said, study have, studies have shown that that's where they usually place it. But that's where they're usually formed. Like I said, on the top of the frame, that's where they're usually placed. So the third final cell I want to talk about is an emergency cell. So emergency cell is whenever the bees suddenly lose a queen. So a lot of times it's whenever we get into a hive and accidentally smash the queen. We, you know, let's face it, a lot of times we smash queens, and it can be very breathtaking whenever we smash a queen, but it does happen, so don't re beat yourself down on it. Just, you know, be, be careful in the hive. It's the only thing you really can do is really no, there's no guarantee that you're not going to smash a queen. But a lot of times, whenever the bees lose a queen, something happened to it, maybe it had a disease, or who knows what happens, what can happen to a queen, you know. But what they'll do is once they, they'll say, uh-oh, we lost a queen for some reason. She was a good queen, but we need to make emergency cells. Guys, let's go ahead and make some emergency cells and get a new queen in here before we start fading away, before we don't have any more larvae to make a queen out of. So then that tells them, okay, that, that's just basically what it is. They're, they're like, okay, we're queenless, and we don't know what happened to our queen. Let's make some emergency cells. And that's kind of how it goes. A lot of times whenever, you know, whenever we make splits, that's what will happen they will make emergency cells because something happened to the queen. They don't know where she went and they don't send her pheromone anymore. That tells them, okay, we are queenless and she maybe died or maybe something happened to her and we need to make a new queen. And that's where how they are formed and that's what they do. And they're usually located in the middle of the frame, all right? No guarantee where they'll be located, like I said, all the time. But that's just where the people, a lot of scientists, and people who study on this, a lot of experts, will say, and that's what we're following. And maybe we'll get more deep into it later on in the future, more data come in. You know, we need more. We have a lot of scientists doing more things for the beekeeping community, which is very good. But that's all for this video. Go ahead and give me a thumbs up. And I enjoy explaining to you guys about the swarm cell, the emergency cell, and the super procedure cell. And to help me out, to help me if the channel and maybe help me grow a little bit, go ahead and subscribe to the channel and give this video a thumbs up. That will help this video get out to more audiences, more beginner beekeepers who need this very good information to help them out with their beekeeping journey. So go ahead and share the video out and share your, the video out to maybe people at your bee clubs, friends, your beekeeping friends, whoever you know that may be interested, go ahead and tell them about me and let them know, come up here and subscribe. That would help me a lot. And that's all for this video. Go ahead and give me a thumbs up. We'll catch you guys on the next beekeeping video.